Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Nader. This is going to be an exercise video for symbols in JavaScript. We're going to go over a bunch of exercises to get more practice with the concept of symbols, which we went over in the previous video. If you haven't seen that one or are curious about symbols, definitely check it out. Uh, in this one, we're going to go over a bunch of ways we can use them for iterators and async iterators, as well as how they work in general to get more practice. Let's get right into them. Okay, so as with the previous videos, I have a bunch of comments at the top and I'm going to kind of uh, explain them, go through them uh, really quick, maybe give you a hint or two, and then you can get a chance to try it yourself, pause the video, um, and then we'll come back and actually go through a possible solution together and some explanation. So for this warm up exercise, what we want to do is create a variable uh, called baboon that points to a symbol with a description of monkey. And the description, if you remember, is just kind of that string that we can pass to the function to actually give uh, a name to our symbol. Um, then we want to create another variable called gorilla that points to a symbol with a description of monkey as well. And we want to print out the types of each of these symbols using type of as well as a description property. And then we want to try to think just before you even run the code, ask yourself, do you think that these two are the same symbol? So looking at them, only the, the difference here is the variable names are different, but the description is the same. They are both a symbol called monkey. Okay, so give that a shot uh, and try it out yourself and then we'll go through this, uh, this solution together. Okay, so let's call this first one baboon as we have. So to create a symbol, we do symbol and we can give it a description uh, right here. So I'll just call this, oops, monkey. There we go. And we can do another one. So const gorilla and this is also going to be a symbol and this is also going to be monkey. Now, at first glance, these look the exact same. Right, so are they the exact same? That's really the question that we're gonna ask. So let's actually log out the types of these first. So we're gonna say console.log type of baboon and then the type of gorilla. All right, let's just run this code as we go just so that we can kind of see this progress. Make sure I'm in the right folder. I'm gonna run node warmup exercise.js and both of these are symbols, so that's perfect. Okay. Now we want to print out the actual descriptions for each of these. So I'm going to say console.log baboon.description and the same thing, but for gorilla.description, right? So uh, they should hopefully have both the description of monkey and they do. So that's perfect. So now the question is, are these the same? So I'm going to say probably not. So let's see if that's true or not. So I'm going to console.log is baboon exactly equal to gorilla? All right, moment of truth, and we get false. Okay, so why is this? If you recall from the previous video, I mentioned that symbols are all globally unique. So even though we give these the same description, they are two totally different symbols. Very similar to if we were to create arrays. So for example, if I call this array one, and I created an array here, Oops, and I say create array two, for example, and I create another array here. Um, it works similar, but a little bit different with symbols. Um, if you think of this array object is actually different than this array object, even though they're both empty arrays. Okay, so symbols work kind of similarly. They are actually two totally different objects and they represent two totally different things. They just happen to have the same description. Just like maybe we could have the same arrays like this with the same values, but they're actually different arrays. Perfect. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's check out exercise number one. So for this one, uh, we want to create a variable called movie that points at this object right here. So it's going to have a name, Blade Runner, director, Ridley Scott, year 1982, rating 89, and genre science fiction. Okay. Then we want to add two more properties to the movie object. Uh, both are going to be symbols. These are going to be the budget. So one's going to be tagged as a budget with 30. Uh, this is going to represent millions. And this is going to be box office, which is how much they earned at the box office. And this is going to be represent millions as well, 41.6. Okay, so uh, these are both symbols. So add both these symbols to the movie object. Then I want you to use a for of loop to actually print out all of the um, entries inside of the movie object. Now do note that you can't do this by default because you can't loop through a movie object. So you're actually going to have to print out their entries. That's the hint for you. Um, if you recall from the object video, how to actually grab 
all the entries out of an object so you can actually loop through them. You want to print out all the key value pairs so you can guess something that looks like this. You can say name and then like maybe an arrow sign or something that goes to Blade Runner. Same thing like director and then arrow sign goes to Ridley Scott. Okay. Um, and then I want you to see, are these symbols going to get printed out? And yes or no. And then um, how was another way to actually print out these symbols? Like how would you actually access these symbols and print them out? We went through an example in the previous video, but you can look up the documentation on MDN um, on how to actually grab symbols out of an object. So give that a shot yourself and then we'll go through the solution together. Okay, so first we want to create a movie object. So I'm going to say const movie. Now for sake of time and uh, <laughs> respecting it for you, I'm going to just create this object down here and uh, it's going to get formatted for me. Um, now I want to add two properties to this movie object and both are symbols. So the first one's going to be tagged with budget and the second one's going to be tagged with box office. Okay, so how do we do this? So we can kind of do this a couple ways. Um, we can, if you did it directly in here, that's okay. But we can also do it kind of like this. I'll just say movie at symbol of budget, budgie, <laughs> budget is equal to 30, right? And then movie, and then I'm setting the symbol of box office, right? So I'm setting this key, right? I'm, get, I'm saying take this key and set it to the value on the right-hand side, which is 41.6 inside of the movie object. Now let's use a for of loop to loop through this. So I'll say for const, and then something, um, I'll just say entry of, now, to get the actual entries out of a object, we went through this in the object video, we can do object.entries of this movie object. Okay, so just to show you what we get here, I'm going to console.log out the entry and let's take a look at what this actually looks like. So if I clear out my console here and I run not my warm up exercise, if I run my exercise one, you can see that we get all of the key value pairs being printed out. Name, a Blade Runner, but this is an array. Same thing with Director Ridley Scott, year 1982, rating 89, genre science fiction, right? So we get back an array of key value pairs. Now there's a couple of ways to actually print this out. Um, I'm going to get a bit fancy since we've covered destructuring already. I'm actually going to destructure out the key and value directly in the for of loop syntax so that we can use it directly because that's the purpose of this loop. So we could, we could kind of say, for example, here, entry at zero and entry dot one, and we could pull out those values, which we've done before, but I'm actually going to pull out directly the key and the value here, okay? So this is saying pull out the key into the key variable, which is gonna be name, for example, and then the value into value variable, which is gonna be Blade Runner the first time around, and do that for every single one of these, since I know it's always gonna return two every single time. So in here, now if I log out, I'll do a template string, and then I will say, dollar sign this, and then an arrow, and then dollar sign that, and here is going to be the key, and then here is going to be a value. Now let's take a look at this. If I run this, we'll see that we pretty much get a similar result, but this time a bit neatly printed out with our arrows, keys, and values together. Now notice, this entire time, we haven't had the symbols printed out. Right? So symbols are not part of an iteration, they are excluded from um, iterators, and that includes things like a for of loop. So how do we actually grab these? So we went through this in the previous video, but if we do object dot get own property symbols, and this was in the documentation for MDN. So if you actually pull up symbols and you look through the documentation, you'll actually see this as the recommended way to grab symbols out of an object. Uh, we can pass it the object we're interested in, in this case, movie, and we can print it out. So I'll just say console.log out whatever we get back from asking for this object's own property symbols. So if I run this, you'll see that we actually get back our uh, symbol of budget and then symbol of box office. Perfect. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, that was definitely a bit of a tricky one, a lot going on there. Perfect. Let's go to number two. So number two and number three are very similar to each other. Um, so definitely take your time with this one um, and the next one. This is kind of the whole intention of me wanting to even bring up sim uh, symbols for all of us in these videos. 
uh, they make iteration really, really simple and very fun to use. So let's kind of go through this together. We want to create a variable called book that points at this object. So this is going to be an object like this. It's going to have a name that's 1984, author George Orwell, year 1984, 19, sorry, 1949, um, rating 4.6, genre science fiction, and movie of true. Okay, so just a, an object here with a bunch of fun properties for us to use. Then we want to create a symbol.iterator property on our book object that will allow us to loop over it using a for of loop. And this for of loop is going to give us back the key value pairs each loop as a paired array. So very similar to what we saw here, or actually before, um, when we were actually looping over this before I destructured it out, we got back an array of a, the key first and the value. We want to do the same for the iterator, but allow us to actually use a for of loop directly so we don't have to do this part here. We can just use movie directly. Okay, so that's really the intention of this. Then we want to be able to use a uh, for of loop to loop through it and actually um, grab those values out. So this is actually incorrect here. I think I meant to say this. Sorry about that. We want to have uh, the, the key values that look like this. I got too excited as I was writing this. And make sure to test this with a for of loop. And the hint I want to give you is that to create this iterator as a symbol, you want to use a generator, um, very similar to how we did in the, in the video for symbols. And if you haven't uh, looked at generators, you can take a look at that video as well. This is the easiest way to do it, not the only way to do it, but definitely the easiest. So again, the goal of this is to make it so we don't have to do object.entries. We can just say for uh, const key value of, in this case, book without object.entries, we can actually do this same code. All right, give that a shot yourself. Definitely a challenging one, and then we'll go through it together. Okay, so I'll create my const book, and I'm going to create this object right here. And I think I forgot a comma. Should probably add that in here. <laughs> and that'll format for me. And now I want to create a symbol.iterator. So how do we do this? So we can add a new symbol using the square bracket syntax to our object. And this is just directly symbol.iterator, just like this. Okay, we just use it directly. Um, and we don't have to call it as a function or anything like that. Now what we want to assign to this property for um, our book is a generator function because that gives us back an iterator or a generator object. So we saw that we can do a generator function using function star just like this. And inside of here, we can yield values out. So now the question is, what are we actually going to yield out of this um, generator? So we can kind of do this a couple of ways. I'm going to go with a simpler way, but you can definitely shorten this um, if you like, if you want to get fancy. So the first thing we need to know is that we need the actual entries from this uh, object so that we can get back these arrays. And then we can yield them out one at a time. So I can say const entries is equal to object.entries of, and then in this case, technically what you're supposed to use is the this keyword, but we haven't learned that yet. So I'm just going to pass in book for now. Okay, this is definitely not the best practice way to do this. Um, the best way to do this is actually using uh, this, um, but we can actually just use book for now. And I'll show you that we can actually use this and what it means in future videos, uh, because it does get a little bit complicated. So that said, um, now that we have these entries, we can do for const uh, entry of entries, we can actually yield that entry. And this is going to be a um, array that kind of looks like one of these. So if I just put a comment here for us, we can see that this is going to look kind of like this. Okay, so we're saying that this is going to be a generator function. And each uh, time this function runs, it's going to yield one of these arrays with a key value pair. And that key value pair is going to be one of the entries inside this object until we run out of them. Now what this is going to allow us to do is run a for of loop, which is our step three. So I can say for const entry, of uh, and I'll say book now, right? So I don't have to do object.entries. I can console.log out the entry and I can even destructure it so we can see how this works. So if I run node exercise two, you can see that we actually get those entries back out, which is pretty amazing, right? This syntax is pretty neat, very similar to just a regular array or a map, for example. 
Okay. And if we want to get really fancy here, we can also destructure this out. We can say key and value, and we can actually grab out the key uh, and the value from this um, array destructured, and we can actually see them out separately as well, just like this with their actual values, which is pretty amazing. So these are numbers, uh, this is, these are all strings, and then this is a Boolean. Perfect. So I mentioned that technically this should be this, and just to show that uh, that, that is actually how it works, um, it does work the same way, but as I mentioned, we do want to actually go through this concept because it's very, very tricky in a future video together on objects and classes. So I'll switch this back to book for now. Perfect. So a lot going on in this example. Um, the trickiest part here is setting this symbol.iterator property on the book, as well as figuring out the generator function actually gives us back that iterator, and then also kind of figuring out the logic to actually yield each of these values back out. So hopefully if you go through this one step at a time, if you understand generators, um, hopefully this kind of makes sense. It definitely takes a little while to wrap your mind around, but this is really, really very, very powerful behavior. We can actually create our own custom iterators for any object that we want. In this case, we're just making it simple to loop over the keys and values, but we could do whatever we want at all. Okay, let's check out the last exercise. So this one, as I mentioned, is basically the same as exercise two with one small caveat. So I kept the object the same just so that we can see how this works. We're gonna create the same book variable, which is gonna be the same object as exercise two, right? Our George Orwell's 1984 book. But now we wanna create a symbol dot async iterator property on the book. And this works slightly differently. This is gonna allow us to use a for await of loop on this book object, and we can get back the keys and values back as promises. And what we want to do is we want to delay getting back those keys and values to kind of simulate something that would be asynchronous. So you can use a set timeout to delay these key value coming back from that async generator by one second. But the functionality is going to be the same. We're still going to get back. I did the same thing here again. I got too, too excited again. Uh, we're going to get back a paired array that looks like this uh, with the keys and the values, but it's just gonna be delayed and it's gonna take a second to actually give it back to us. So that really is the main difference. The main thing to keep in mind here as well is that in order to actually really test this function, we're gonna need to create an async function to actually allow us to use a for await of loop inside of it so that we can actually use that async iterator. Uh, and if that part is confusing, we go through that in the generator video as well. So again, a generator function that's an async generator function is the easiest way to actually make this work. And you can assign it to a symbol.async iterator property very similar to exercise two. It's just gonna be an async function that returns a promise with a set timeout in it. So we'll give that a shot and then we'll go through it together. All right, so this was pretty hairy. Um, this is probably one of the more complicated exercises that we're going through together. So if none of that made any sense, you just wanna look at the answer, I totally don't blame you at all. Uh, but hopefully when you actually see us walk through this together, it makes a bit more sense and you can kind of wrap your mind around it even a little bit. So we'll say const book, I'm just gonna copy this object right here. I realized I forgot the comma, so I'll add that in. <laughs> uh, comma right here. Then we wanna create a symbol.async iterator property. Okay. So we're gonna say book, and this is gonna be symbol. And instead of iterator, we're gonna say async iterator. So this is camel case async iterator. And instead of a regular function star like this, which is a generator function, we're gonna tag this as an async generator function, okay, which we covered in the async generator function video. Now this allows us to return promises every single time that we yield values out of this function. So they're always gonna be promises. And in this case, what we're gonna to wanna to do is loop through all of the entries and yield them out, but uh, delayed by one second. Okay, so we can kind of follow the same kind of logic. So we can say const entries is equal to object.entries. And again, instead of using this, I'll just use book for now, just because we haven't learned this and it's a bit more, um, we need more context as to how that actually works. Then we can create a for of loop here. So we can say for const entry of entries, then what we want to do is instead of yielding it directly like we do here, we want to create an artificial delay of one second before we yield that entry. So what we want to do to do that is yield a new promise object. And this promise is going to resolve and reject just like any other promise. And inside of here, we can do a set timeout for our delay. So here we can do a set timeout 
and we can do a timeout for one second in this case, 1000 milliseconds, and then we can resolve with our entry. Okay, so that is quite crazy, right? So really just to recap this, we're grabbing all the entries, we're looping through each one. Each one of these is going to be an array that looks kind of like this, right? So same as before. But we aren't going to resolve it right away. We're going to yield a promise that is going to resolve with that entry, but after one second. Okay, that's the main difference. So let's see how we can actually loop through this um, using an async function. So we want to be able to do this. We want to say for await const entry of entries, or sorry, of uh, book, we want to be able to console.log out the entry. But we can't use a for await of loop outside of an async function, so we need to wrap this in an async function. So I'll just say uh, const execute, uh, I guess, book, <laughs> and this is going to be an async. I'll do an arrow function for now, and I'll wrap this entire thing in an async arrow function just like that. So now we can actually use this await syntax inside of an async function. Perfect. And then we have to call our function. So I'll just do that down here. I'll call execute book. And that's actually going to execute the code inside this function. So what we want to see is this console log is going to run every one second for each promise that gets yielded out out of this kind of one at a time. Okay, so in total, since we have one, two, three, four, five, six properties in our book, this is going to take six seconds to yield through all of them. So let me pull up my editor here or my terminal, I'm gonna run node exercise dash three. And now let's see if this actually takes some time before we actually get each of these printed out. There we go, that's one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then we're done, right? So you can see that this code took about six seconds to execute, which is pretty amazing, right? Like that is pretty cool. So we're looping through an object, right? Using a regular 408 of loop, because we're able to put this special symbol async iterator on it. Okay, and this works the same way as the symbol iterator. It's just that this one happens to be an async generator instead of regular generator because it's an async iterator. And inside of here, we can do whatever we want. In this case, we just happen to be resolving with the keys and values. And we can do the same thing here if we want. We can say we want to pull out the key and the value, destructure it out, and I can actually log out the key and the value separately. So if I run this, now we'll actually see the key and the value um, themselves being actually logged out, very similar to what we had in our previous example. There we go. That's pretty awesome. I know the first time I started working with these, uh, it kind of blew my mind. There's a lot of power behind them, and we'll see a lot more examples in the future as we start really working with these and involving them with classes and things like that, as I've mentioned a few times. I'm super excited to actually get to those, but in order to actually understand what's happening there, we really need to actually look at symbols and generators and all that kind of stuff to actually make sure it makes sense theoretically behind the scenes. Perfect. So I hope this set of exercises was valuable for you. Um, if you did find them useful, um, I'd love it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'd like to hear in the comments, were these too complicated? Did I go a bit overboard and get too excited sharing this video with you? Or did you find it useful? Even if you only found it semi-useful or 10% of this actually kind of you know sunk in, that's still fantastic, right? That's perfect. Um, because eventually the more that you see this stuff, you see a symbol over here, a symbol over there, be like, oh, okay, I remember what a symbol is. And I remember what a generator and an async iterator and an iterator is. And slowly these things will piece together. And a lot of the logic behind how JavaScript actually does things behind the scenes will actually make a lot of sense. So in the next video, what we're going to go over is the concept of regular expressions. Um, we're actually just going to go uh, kind of surface level into it to start to get us kind of a, a bit of a, a heads up as to how it can work. Uh, because it's quite a deep topic, but it will actually go enough into it that we can actually start using it in our applications. So I'm super excited to get to regular expressions. I'll see you in that video.